Rather than creating a gritty, intelligent, horror action movie, we have a movie that has just got too lost in Hollywood. It's like watching a child try on its parents' clothes. It just isn't quite the right fit. Just in case you haven't read the title of this video, it is a big fat spoiler review of Terminator Genesis. I felt like I couldn't do it any other way, so here it is for you. So we have the fifth film of the franchise, set in an alternative universe. I've been rather conflicted with my thoughts on this movie, and it's probably the reason why it's took me so long to get this review up. You know, being a huge, 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 huge Terminator 1 and 2 fan, you know, they're probably actually in my top 10 list ever, it's really hard to sort of conjure up your feelings on this movie. So I kind of came to the conclusion that it isn't bad and it isn't good either, but it's watchable. Who isn't watchable is the new Kyle Reese. Jai Courtney, the franchise killer. Has Jai Courtney even watched The Terminator? Oh my God, like where is his intensity? Why would he be built up like that when food is scarce in the future? Just, oh gosh, even when he started with the voiceover, I'm pretty sure everyone in the screening could hear my internal voice just screaming, it's all wrong! I said when he was cast as Kyle Reese that he is not Kyle Reese, and after watching the film, I can confirm he is not Kyle Reese. Jai Corney must have one bloody good agent or manager because how they convinced the casting team of this movie to play one of my favourite movie characters in movie history, I just don't know. I, I just, I don't get it. Yes, I just made this personal people big time. Michael Bean, or I should say Kyle Reese, <laughs> was one of my first loves. He is sexy, he's intense, he's courageous, and he looks like he's been through hell and back because of the war. Jai Courtney's Kyle Reese just looks like every other character that he has played in the many franchises he is in. Soft, well-groomed beefcake that looks like he's had a really nice shower and a good buffering. Why not get Anton Yelchin back? It makes sense. Or even give Topher Grace a go. Yeah, he's played Bean's son, so certainly I think he could take on this iconic role. Yeah, that's right. Certainly would have been a better choice than that Jai hack. A little harsh, maybe. But if you love the first two Terminator films the way I do, then you, you will feel really conflicted with Genesis. It's some nostalgia clouding your judgment. I have to say, the opening of the movie had me hooked from the moment we see 1980s digitalised Arnie to Kyle Reese putting on his Nike trainers. We've got a good attempt by South Korean Robert Patrick as the T-1000, but he just doesn't quite have the moves, the ears, or the menacing features like Patrick. But you're never gonna live up to that because Robert Patrick as a T-1000 is my favourite movie villain of all time and I don't think anything will ever top that. My reaction to Robert Patrick's T-1000, no matter how many times I watch this movie, it's always like the one in Wayne's World. <sighs> yeah, in this film, I didn't feel any kind of terror. I would give two thumbs up to Amelia Clark because she had the look of Linda Hamilton and she carried off the strong, independent, kick-ass woman well. And as for Arnie, He's Arnie! Of course he's awesome! Terminator 1 and 2 are utterly terrifying because of the way the robots move and look. But in Genesis, they look like toys. And I just don't think the 12A rating works for the Terminator films. They don't match that dark, scary, gritty nature of the first two movies. And this movie was certainly missing the steamy, important sex scene with the memorable hand release. But you're not gonna get that from a 12A movie. What I don't understand is it relies heavily on you seeing the first and the second 
film. So how can a child understand what is going on when they're not old enough to see the classics? In a nutshell, this movie sold out by making it a 12A in the hope of making a bit more money. But in fact, if they had made this at least a 15, they probably would have had a bigger box office success. The marketing was a really huge problem for this film. Seeing as we found out that John Connor was a Terminator from the trailers, sack the person who decided that was a good idea. Nothing was a surprise. I felt like the film was trying to go, hey, did we fool you? Are you thrilled by the twists and turns? Well, no, not really, because you've shown it all in the trailer. And already I knew what Matt Smith would be playing. You know, you can hide it all you want on the IMDb page by not giving him a character name, but I'm not fooled. You know, it's a process of elimination. There was three options here. He was either going to be the T-1000, which he would have been awesome at, by the way, but we already knew that South Korean Robert Patrick was playing this role. Second option is that he was going to be the guy that discovered time travel or created the machine, but then that would have opened up way too many jokes and would have been a journalist's wet dream. So that leaves us with the obvious option of Matt Smith playing Skynet. Surprise! Goddamn marketing! It skims over the important stuff just way too quickly. There's no time to take in. And it doesn't even take the time to just do some really nice, good, intelligent dialogue. You know, for a film that involves robots and time travel, give us mere humans time to digest. One thing is for sure, it may not have been the best Terminator film, which is never gonna happen because one and two are utter classics, but it certainly is better than the third and fourth. So the movie may not be a masterpiece or the blockbuster of the year, but you know, everyone's talking about it. When was the last time I talked about a movie for so long? So it's done something right or wrong, but people are talking about it and people are going to see it. So there you go. To conclude, it's watchable. Keeping the comment question simple for this review, if you are still listening to my rant, what is your favorite Terminator film?